just being a mom and now I'm like just being a mom wait a moment being a mom is the hardest work I've ever done in my life and I've done so many things and so many challenges and I and I was so ambitious and like my ambition now it goes to be the best mom I can be from Mama Mia I'm Mia Friedman and you're listening to No Filter the podcast where I talk to people who have a story to tell do not mention the elephant in the room When you're interviewing Elsa Pataki, that elephant has a name and it's Chris Hemsworth, her husband. Now, look, like every woman, Elsa is so much more than the person she's married to. Of course she is. But even Elsa will agree that in Australia, that's what she's best known for. Even though she is, in fact, a world famous actor in her own right, a mother of three, and now an author of a new book called Strong about her approach to food and fitness and her lifestyle. And when the publicist for the book company who've published Elsa's book called and asked if I wanted to interview her for No Filter, I had one question. Would she be comfortable talking about things other than what was specifically in the book? Because Elsa is an incredibly beautiful woman and uh, yes, I'm absolutely interested in her lifestyle, but I'm much more interested in her life. The answer came back that yes, she'd be happy to talk about other things and we arranged a time for the interview and in she came. And some very unlikely people in the Mamma Mia office, who are usually never starstruck and are totally blasé about celebrities, became decidedly giddy when she walked in. It is hard to explain how beautiful Elsa Pataki is. It's like looking at the sun or something. Like, you can't stare at her for too long or your eyes start to burn and then they fall out. And I swear, I'm not exaggerating. And she's also, like, tiny. I mean, I'm small, I'm short, and she makes me feel enormous, like I could pop her in my pocket. And yes, she's ripped. But my lord, she's good fun. In the time that we spent together for this interview, nothing was off limits. And we spoke about how she met Chris and how she feels as a feminist to have her stellar career eclipsed by his in the past few years. And also about how becoming a mother affected her ambition. Elsa speaks five languages, and English is just one of them. And she also speaks really fast, so try to keep up. Here's Elsa Pataki. Before you and Chris met, you were a much bigger star than him. Mm. You were um, incredibly famous in Spain, Mm. and then you were an action star in the Fast and Furious movies, playing Elena, the character Mm -hmm. in a number of those movies. After you and Chris met and got married and you took some time out to have many babies Mm -hmm. and bring them up, Mm -hmm. and that kind of coincided with his star rising and becoming this this big celebrity, what was that like, that shift in that power, not power dynamic, but in in your different sort of roles over that time that you were together? I think it was perfect timing because I was like, I kind of done everything and I had that. And and even if it was like not worldwide, like he is a, a like crazy uh, movie star right now. But I had all that. I have the attention. I have like, I did my work. I, I work in different countries, different languages. Um, so I felt that I did a lot and he was like, no, this is my time to, would you just be able to not compete in that way? And, and especially when you have family and when we decided to have a family, if we, if we were competing in that because we're mm-hmm. a very competitive person, both of us, um, which it happens in a lot of couples, um, you know, it was going to become very difficult because then it's like my movie, then I have to do her movie and we have to follow here and go in there and we never stay in one place, you know, so... It was my moment and I say, I want a family. I'm going to focus on my family. It's your time to shine and to do everything. I've done it. I know what it mm. is. And that would make it easy because I knew that what, is, what is coming to him, you know. I knew he, what he will be. And I always have that faith that it will be like a, um, a movie star because he's like such a – hard worker he does everything with so much intensity and passion and mm-hmm. like I knew all these things will, will, will come uh, but, and I was ready for it and I'm like but it's just a lot of changes in, in him and how to take things and but I, I was there and I was like I've never been jealous of like what he had but because I had it and 
And I just had like, when I was a little bit low, and this is like crazy to say, but you need that push of people. And I would go to Spain and like, you have that coming back again yeah. to you. And yeah. I was like, like oh, I still okay. got it. Yeah, I still got it. I'm still there. I was like, and she was like, well, yeah, you got the most sexy men alive. I was like, well, I did it for 10 years in Spain. Come on. <laughs> so it was funny, you know, having that, it was yeah. just so much easier. And, um, and I, I'm so proud of him. And I, he was also, when we met, so proud of what I've done, you know, mm. and how many movies I've done and how many different languages. And so we have this both admiration for each other, you know, which is, I think is very important in a couple, you know, just not just one way. Yeah. I think that, it has a that you're equals because yeah. you, you had achieved all these things. In fact, before he had achieved them mm-hmm. in his career, you became famous and, and had all of your success before you met him and some of it after Mm -hmm. but his star really rose quite quickly after you met Mm -hmm. what's that like as a as a feminist to suddenly be called mrs hemsworth it didn't affect me it didn't affect me uh i because i knew it would happen and i i had it before so it was like yep great and i like Mm. it's all my admiration about like what was happening to him and i was the first one to just like and he is so normal like you know some people just suddenly change a little bit and has another attitude and like i don't know talks different or like talk different to another women and all these women that come to him he's always scared in that way you know he's not being like um with you know latins are very the way they talk about women is so different yeah like, womanizers and and yeah um he's never had that so he's always uncomfortable in like situations with the women and i kind of love that about him so and it make me trust him so much he makes you feel secure yeah, exactly yeah. exactly he never used that for anything and i i love that and that would make me in love with him that respect that he has for women too and he is a very feminist because he's like he like his mom is one of the most feminist and he just put all those thoughts and like um that was like even the Me Too movement. I love it, but I'm just like sometimes I'm sad that we don't defend the men that actually defend us, you know, also. Mm-hmm. And like there's not you can't point to every man that are doing like um treating us different. No, there's a lot of men that actually mm-hmm. respect us and they want that for us. So generalizing sometimes it's just like of watch watch out because I have an an amazing man close to me that um that what he he's very fem- like a feminist too you know mm. he's fighting for that too mm. and I'm proud of that so yeah no no it wasn't nothing that um actually bothered me at all but I feel it's like his his approach to it and his maturity um it was there so I think he always respect me and and treat me amazing and and I make me feel good about like yeah I'm here but you've done all these things and you achieve all these things and of course you have those moments of like I'm just a mom what am I doing oh god I want to do this and I'm like oh he's doing all these things I've done a movie for a while and like of course I have those moments of insecurity you know that you have when you have kids and those like depressed and like oh and like just being a mom and now I'm like just being a mom wait a moment being a mom is the hardest work I've ever done in my life and I've done so many things and so many challenges and I and I was so ambitious and like my ambition now it goes to be the best mom I can be and I and I, I have to say I don't know like a it's, it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Like, mm. seriously, the most amazing thing. And I, it's nothing that gives you more back than being a mom. Like, I, I love and everything. But I had, it's it's also really hard, you know, because you do a great job the whole day. And then you just shout for one time and you go to bed and like, oh, I'm like, oh, the worst mom. It's like, after a day of work, you feel proud of yourself. I work so hard. 15 hours working is, it's amazing, but I did a great job. And I'm like, you do the same thing as a mom and go to bed feeling guilty. It's like, why? It's so true. <laughs> yeah. You so. said you loved, and I really understand this, you, that, you know, loved the part where they're a bit older now. Yeah. What is it about this age that you're really loving? The sort of having kids that are now at school. Part of the guilt I found went because they're at school every yeah. day so that's good yeah they've got yeah. more of an independent life yeah it gives you a break too I feel it gives you a time to just like suddenly like dedicate you 
to yourself a little bit for a moment. It's just like having a time to read a book that you have done. And, and a lot, I feel like I was like, I don't know what's going on in the world. I don't have to just listen to anything. And I can't read nothing, the newspapers. So it's just, you have that time back and like, okay, okay, God, I can just read, get the newspaper, have my coffee, do exercise, you know, just mm. get your time back. And I, I feel it's great for them to, and to go to school and then you get your energy back to come back, pick them up and just like, yeah, got it. I got this, you know, mm. so different. And, and the, the relationship with them, they learn things, they tell you things, they like what they're they've funny. done, they're funny. funny. You tell them what you've done to during the day. And so, so it's just different. I feel it's a good balance suddenly, mm. yeah. There's a lot in your book about confidence and strength and you tell a story about a friend of yours called Marta who complained to you about her weight all the time. Yeah, about the um, um, the scale and how it's obsessed. And this is like one of part of them in the book that I, I talk about. When you are obsessed about losing weight and you're just like um, counting the grams that every day, it becomes like so hard and um, and such a burden to lose weight, to feel healthier. And, and I think it should be something that it comes easily you have to just first I think that's what the, the book is called strong because you have to make that decision and you have to be strong and say this is what I want to do I want to eat healthy I want to um, do more exercise start doing mm. exercise take care of myself feel good about myself and all those things that make me insecure just change them no? and that it starts with a strong mind because if you start that you is that the first step, but you don't have to give up. It's very mm. easy to give up. You know, it's very easy to just start and like, oh, there's no changes. Like, look, the scale, like I don't even lose any gram. And it's a long process and you have to be patient. And From you the have inside to be out. Really strong yeah. to just like not giving up. And and Marta was saying like the same as like, I don't lose any weight. This is horrible. I don't know what to do. And I say, like, why you don't start something that you're passionate about? Start with like doing some find your hobby that you can exercise and at the same time being happy. Mm. You know? And like she's like, what can I do? And like, why you don't start like like get yourself into a marathon or some running or something like that. Um because it happened to me too. And uh, and then it's like, oh, well, I never thought about that. She started running and she started getting into marathons and getting with friends and started challenging herself. And now and she's get like a better, proper runner. Better. And she's now like a proper <laughs> runner. <you know? laughs> a time in um, many women's lives when there are big changes in her lifestyle and in her body is with pregnancy. Mm. Tell me about the day you found out you were pregnant with twins. So it was very surprising. Uh, I didn't expect it at all. Um, in the beginning, it was I had a big shock. And especially because, you know, you, you're like, oh, my God, my body, two kids. And then, then I'm like a very positive person. I was like, I always wanted three kids. So that's it. One less pregnancy. That's perfect. Because I'm a very active person and I love to work out. Um, so I was like, oh, great. It was The pregnancy was hard for me because I need to move. And, and even the twins was like, oh, it's a very risk kind of a pregnancy. Because mm. you're uh, so tiny. And how old was yeah. your daughter when you found out that you were pregnant with the boys? Oh, she was like uh, not even to by like one and a half like so did you expect to go again so quickly well we were trying to be pregnant but not that quick I feel so um we, so then was when like, you had the ultrasound a lot of people say that they can remember so vividly that moment what was it like in the room when you found out same Chris and I would look at each other and we got so scared I'm like oh my god and, and but I'm I was like I was trying to pause it because I was really scared and I was too, but I was trying to just make it like very like, okay, this is okay. This is good. We can do this <laughs> because if it was your first one, it's kind of, I feel easier, but having another one, it become like harder. Um, but, um, but I was like, look, I, you, you know, we would have three kids. No, it was like, so now it's just two and one. It's perfect. We're not going to have to go and do this again. And then finish. <laughs> and then finish and we're done. And it, 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 it was a hard period. And pregnancy was um, was actually not as bad as I thought because when you have twins, they don't let you do much. But I convinced myself I can do everything. Like the same as I like, don't, don't pick up your daughter because it's just so risky. I'm like, talk to my daughter and tell her I can't pick her up. And she's like one year old and mm. one and a half. And I was like, I can't do this. So I was just keeping doing like what I usually do. I keep doing exercise till I was like almost 
well, 37 weeks, like really doing everything. I was doing like Pilates and um, I was doing yoga. I was doing up and down the stairs. I was doing squats. I was just wow. needed to do it because you had that, that addiction and I can't be. My mom was like, lay down the sofa. You need to rest. I'm like, no, I can't. I can't do it. You're so tiny, Elsa. You're like teeny tiny, like small. Yeah, yeah. And with even one baby, I imagine, but with two, like you must have been like almost wider than you were tall. How did you not just yeah. topple over? Oh, it was like really funny. I see photos now and I can't believe it. I was like from behind, you couldn't tell I was pregnant. And then you see him from the side and it's this like <laughs> massive because actually I made it till 37 and a half weeks and then usually in 38 weeks, they just take them yeah. like um, just, just like you have a, you have a cesarean. Um, so I was like when they told me, Oh, uh, you will, you know, you will go to the hospital when you're 38 weeks. I'm like, I will never make it to 38 weeks. And it turned out that I did in 37 mm. weeks. And I was telling this story to my friends because I was like, at um, 30, yeah, 37, I was, they told me they were safe. They didn't need to go to the incubator and mm. I was all fine. And then I started with my daughter, like jumping in the trampoline, going crazy, just wanted the kids to go out. <laughs> <laughs> to like, try to bring on labor. Just bring on labor. <laughs> like I need it. I couldn't do it anymore. It was heavy. Just, you know, like I'm going up the stairs. I couldn't even put my oh. underwear. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it was a big, big belly. And the boys were as big as India when I had just India. So like each one was like almost the same weight as India when he was born. So I've always wondered, I've got three kids but not twins, and I've always wondered you'd you'd have the experience of having one baby, which Mm. is very intense and very intimate. Mm. And it's never quite as intimate after your firstborn because you've always still got another baby to think about. But what were the biggest differences that you found in those early couple of weeks with twins versus just having one? Um, It's just a blur. That's the thing. It's just a blur because you just have to do it. And I was like, I was breastfeeding both at the same time because I wanted to have time with my daughter, if I would have to on demand, I would have been just there all the time, like all day long, didn't yeah. have any time. So you needed a like, routine. I needed like really strong routines and timing and like I knew the hours and I had to do it, the sleep and like all the not routines that you have in your first baby. And like your second mm-hmm. baby, you start having them. Your third baby, you're like, yeah, this is has to be a routine or whatever. <laughs> but um, that was like really important to just trying to just have a timing because if not, I wouldn't spend any time with the boys. But I feel like uh, it's not, you don't have as those moments of like you and your baby and breastfeeding. Yeah. And just like you feel tired and it, it's a hard period. I really admire like every woman who has no help because I had my mom. I was really lucky. My mom was met with me 24-7. So when I had breastfeeding both of them, I would just pass her one and then she would pass me the other one. <laughs> I was like, these things, you can't do it by yourself. So like for people that does it and moms that have done this by themselves, I'm like, I have just I have so much admiration for them because it's just a hard work. Were you in Byron by then? You were no. living... No, we where were. were you, where did you have the babies? We had them in LA. I had them in LA, and the, when they're one month old, we had to go to London. So I have to travel <sighs> with them when they were like one month, little tiny. And then we spent a lot of time in London because Chris was shooting there. So, so yeah, it was just like it was hard also traveling with them, being babies and breastfeeding in the plane and all the things you do, you know. So it's just, um, I feel like, um, yeah, you don't you don't give that much connection and it just the memories are mm. like very blurred <laughs> they just, just feel yeah. working <laughs> there's a time for every um mum after having a baby where you sort of come up for air and you feel like yourself again for mm. me it was always when i stopped breastfeeding when mm-hmm. i sort of returned to it's not that i didn't like being in the baby bubble but when was it for you yeah, I think the same. Just like uh, on there's a moment and like they, um, I I breastfed him for like five months and I was just really hard and like the 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 last month I was doing like also formula because I couldn't cop mm. like it was just a lot. But I was trying so hard. But um, then it's at the moment you just start and like it's sleeping and I was because you you know pumping like at night times and it's just all those hours like with the machine and trying to and uh, um, I 
just exactly when I think you stop breastfeeding, it's just like you start breathing again. It's yeah. <laughs> just like, okay, okay, I can like have a life for a second. Yeah. You know? And I think every woman, we forget about it immediately. That's what we have babies again. I think if you will be in your memory, I don't mm. know if you will do it again. <laughs> Well, that's that that probably makes it easier for you to decide not to have any more because I was going to say a lot of people have in their mind I'm going to have this many children. Yeah. And then when your youngest gets to be around 2 or 3, you start thinking, "Oh, maybe I'll go again." <laughs> Did you ever think you'll go one more time or you were always like, "No." No, I think um no, no, I wanted my life back a mm-hmm. little bit and I uh, and I think and um, even with um, with Chris have our time together again because it's just like the mom- those moments you're so busy that like mm-hmm. you kind of lose each other for a moment, you know, because it's all about kids and kids and like you feel like that connection of those moments that you, we try to have a date every now and then and like having a moment for us, but just you get caught into all so the true. kids' um, world and like you can't even have a conversation almost like because you're interrupted a mm. hundred times. It's like, yeah, I just want to have a normal conversation. You two were, <laughs> were together for how long before you had the baby? We like just two years together, like uh, mm. two and a half years together, I think. Um, so, yeah, very, we, we did everything very fast. One fast and one after another. So, yeah, almost we, we we knew each other and we love each other so much. But, like, usually when you have kids, you have, like, a more solid relationship. So we were a little crazy in that way, you know. But it, we worked out really good, but we learned about each other so much. And, like, I think we put, um, I say, our marriage, so so many challenges, you know, mm-hmm. so early. Um, but um, and I think it made, us, it made us really strong. I say now, like, like you, we have every challenge. Like, we just get married in less than a year knowing each other. And then we have kids immediately and then we build a house. So, really I mean, quickly. More, everything at the same time, almost, yeah. right? So it's just like those are big challenges for a couple. And so we just made it and we are stronger than ever. So I think it's just like they can throw anything to mm. us right now and I think we will make it. <laughs> I read that you um, um, introduced, it said by mutual representatives. It sounds like a setup. Was it like a blind date that two people thought that you should be together? Why did they think you should be together? Well, it was our, um, actually, it was our um, um, dialect coach. So we both have, um, we're working our accents. Chris was working in his British accent and I was working in my Spanish accent in English. <laughs> and, and 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 this girl, which was a friend of mine, but I just, just our voice coach, um, just thought that, it was, that we would like have to be together for some reason. I don't know what like sign or it was meant to be. It was destiny and like, we were like, she was like, you have to meet the guy. I'm like, oh, of course, yeah, yeah sure. And um, and she did the same with him and like she insisted so much because we were like, eh, so one day like seriously, like I want to have to call this guy. And and of course she saw us photos to each other and I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, he's cute. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully Chris just said the same thing, no? <laughs> about me and yeah but we have totally blended we I just call him on the phone and I remember he's beautiful because one of the things I like most of Chris is like his voice he has such mm. a beautiful deep voice I was like oh like and I I remember it's like what I'm gonna say like actually I hang out the first time <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I called again and um, and say like just like let's have a coffee or something I think like if not our voice coach is gonna get crazy if we don't meet and um and that was it. Yeah, we had um blind date one day for just having a, a coffee and for maybe half an hour and then we met again. It, it took our time. It was not yeah. like right away. My mother always warned me not to have babies with someone from a different country mm-hmm. because she said there will always be conflict about where you live and where you bring up the children. How, when did it become clear to you and Chris, I mean, I imagine in that early stages, you were both from different countries living in LA. Mm-hmm. How did that first start to come up between you and how did you resolve it? So, yeah, that's a good, yeah, it's a good thing. My mom said the same thing to me, especially when you travel so much. It's okay because it becomes really complicated. Um, we promised each other that, um, that, I wouldn't make him live in Spain and he wouldn't make me live in Australia because our families were so far from each other. And um, and LA was kind of in the middle. Um, but 
when we were in LA, we were like, okay, um, this is, and we we had kids. And I was like, this is not a place for. I I thought it was like not a place for kids to grow up or not what I I wanted to them to grow up. Um, What's LA like? I don't really understand. I've been there a couple of times, but I don't really have a sense of it. Like, why is it not a good place for kids to grow up? I feel like it's really good place when you are like in really young period of your life that you're very ambitious and you just want to just achieve like all your goals as a um, and you're passionate about acting. It's mm. a city for like actors and directors and um, writers like um, a working town exactly like a working town I feel a little bit the same about New York for some reason but I think even LA is more complicated I know the distance are like crazy and being from Europe for me that was a killer so when you have a kid and you have to have it for like one hour in the car it just drives you crazy it was driving me crazy Um, because you have to drive everywhere in LA right you drive everywhere you can't walk anywhere like and it's lots of traffic and then become isolated because you don't want to get in the car so you don't move from where you are Mm -hmm. people stay in the same place you start to not socialize and not being outside and um, and then it's the part of like of oh, start knowing and I'm being the paparazzi and I my daughter start hating it. So mm. it's a few things that make us like oh I don't feel great here and then especially I don't feel like oh, kids will love to be here. I don't want them to be celebrities with like when they're like two years old. Um, it's their decision and they will take the decision decision when they're older. So so that was like, yep, man, we agree with that, which was great. But then it started like the question was like, where are we going to live? We want to live in somewhere like like remote <laughs> and nature. And and you, we used to go a lot to Costa Rica to have like uh, holidays in Costa Rica. We loved it there. And then we were like, okay, what about Costa Rica? And they speak in Spanish. For me, it was great. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a very, um, Malparaiso is just like an area that is very, there's nothing almost there, you know. Um, but then it was like, like schools, like the most, like the most complicated thing was uh, hospitals. It was very difficult to get to a hospital. And actually, uh-huh. Chris got sick once, and it was like, it took us forever to get to, um, to the city. And uh, it was, I like being close to a hospital, yeah, particularly especially with kids, particularly with kids. So it's just like, yeah. So that was out on the window, and then we we're like, okay. So Chris, when um, when we came here for the first time, and um. In Australia, I visited Melbourne. I was going around. I was before here in Phillip Island when I was young, but that's another story. Anyway, but um, so and then he took me when I was here into Byron for a weekend, and I loved it. I loved the energy. Something special about it. So when we were in LA, it's like, what about Byron? You remember Byron? We went there. I was like. Yes, I remember Byron. I love Byron. And it was the beach. Chris loves surfing. He has to be really close to the ocean. And I love it too. So um, there was like, okay, let's go there for like a month or two months. See how we feel. And if we like it, we just stay there. And we're like, we were there for two weeks and we already bought a house. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I was like well we didn't expect it we were looking things and this happened and they like we make an offer and just like yep done and we were like oh my god wait wait this is going too fast that's always in our lives but we were never scared of what, like things like that like challenges like that and, and, and we were accepting everything happened so quick so we were like yeah, done and and it's true that I'm really far from my family but it's a place that is amazing. It's everything I dream of. Like when I was little, I grew up in a city, but my dream was like living on a farm and have horses and be in nature. And I'm just, I love to dress and but my my dress up and you know but I've done all that and now I just love to be barefoot and just not thinking about mm. any makeup or what I do with my hair or what I'm dress what I have to put on um mm. so spell I just all the love way, it right? yeah I have spell and that's <laughs> it all the way spell is all my closet and that's it don't need anything else I love them too and I feel it's this place that is very um, the, it has this feminine energy. Like I never see so mm. many women that start things there, and they're moms, and they're working, and they're creating brands, and they do everything in a very relaxed, not ambition way. You know, just very like, yeah, they started, but the priority is family and quality of life. So quality of life is very big in Byron, right? Exactly. It's yeah. just like that quality of life is just, it's the only place 
is how you you go to the swimming classes of the kids and they're the moms and the dads in the classes, not nannies. Yeah. I love this also. I tell this story, but I had a meeting with an architect the other day and we just just doing things and um, talking about this project. Half an hour after we have the meeting, it's like, I have to go. I have like an art like exhibition of my kid. I really have to go. And I was like, I love it. It's like, who will tell you here? Sorry, we have to just like, yeah. like end this conversation because I have to go and get my kids exhibition like I have of to go art. And get my f- chakras red. Exactly. It's <laughs> like, uh, so it's the priority. Like yeah. family is a priority and you can feel that and it just makes me happy there. Can you guys live... Um, an anonymous life in Byron. I mean, you can't. Everyone knows who you are. Mm. And I guess, I don't know, what's that What's that like? How How do you manage that? It's it's a small town. So you become, like, it's this small community. So you get part of the community and then people just see you as you are, which I love. Like, I'm nothing different than anybody else. We're not, nothing special. We have the same things and same problems and same, um, you know, fights and like problems with your kids and get crazy as a mom mm-hmm. like everybody else. So Because the kids yeah. just go to the local school. Yeah, yeah, Torres, Byron community there is like really small school, which we love. And yeah, just normal and become part of that community. You have a voice and nobody thinks you are nothing mm-hmm. different than anybody else, you know. How has your ambition changed as you've got older? Are you you're forty three now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How how has it changed for you after having kids and then now coming out the other side of it? Mm-hmm. You've kicked all these amazing goals mm-hmm. in your career. You've had these children. You've got this great marriage. Now you've written a book. But how has your feeling about ambition changed? Changed so much. Um, I feel like uh, when you're young, I was so hungry and like you're just ready to eat the world, you know, and just whatever happens, I'm like ready to take it, you know. And and I said like, um, like they ask me sometimes, like, what do you say to a young Elsa? And I say, I want to say anything because everything I've done and all the obstacles I have in life, they may be learned and make me who I am right now. So I want my daughter, even if it's hard and she will have it, to have all those moments. She has to have those moments of suffering, those kicks of life that are really hard and they put you down. Uh, you need all those moments to get stronger and you have to go through them. Um, so I, I had that and I was like, I don't know, it was like I cried in some hours. I had my mom always with me to help me. Um, but, you know, but that ambition keeps you going. I feel like when you get older and you have your kids, everything kind of suddenly relax, you know, you're not, your ambitions go in like another way. Like you just want to maintain what you have right now, be happy with like, I'm just trying to focus in what I have and enjoying everything that I have right now, not just looking at what can I achieve my, what is my next goal? What is just mm. like, what is it coming? Or I need to do something. I was just like, no, you have so many things now to be happy about that um, you need to enjoy those moments. It's just like, calm down, stop like just looking at what you don't have anymore and just appreciate it, what you have and you, what you've done, you know, and that just to relax you and, and, makes you have another perspective about everything, you know, and just slow down, slow down. And you can't have that when you're young, you know, it's just you can't slow down. But I think this is like, I think women would say that our 40s is the time that you feel more mature, more confident with yourself, like knowing about everything. And it's just so mature and so like, secure you know and like yeah i love it i love it and then you start having wrinkles and you're like damn it it's my best moment in my life and just suddenly which is like but it's but it doesn't really matter if you have all those things and you've done all those things you know so i i think just now is exactly that just slow down and just just enjoy this and not trying to get another another step on another step when you look at your 20s and your 30s and your 40s which has been your best and worst decades out of those? I think these last years, like this from 30 to 40 was my favourite time, yeah. Like basically because I just feel good with myself. I start feeling good with myself and and more confident. I think you have so many doubts. Like I will never go back to, to my 20s. Oh. I just oh, too, hard. Like, yeah, <laughs> too hard. Like, yeah, it's too hard. I know in the moment you're like, you have so much energy and it's great, you know. But I wouldn't exchange it at all for like, I, I, I was saying, I mm. love my 40s. And I love my that. 40s too, but yeah. 
I don't do a job that um, values me on how I look. So being an actress and being ambitious, your ambition, I imagine, changes, but you still want to work, right? Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. then is it getting easier to be an actress in your 40s and beyond or is Hollywood still obsessed with, you know, 20s? No, it's changing. It's changing, which is good. Uh, like I think uh, there's so m- much more roles right now for all. And you can see, you can see the movies and they just focus now and doing stories about like older women that are really interesting that you have mm. s- so much more to learn that with like story of like a young girl, you know. I think like there's so many more um, wisdom in like an like a older person to watch it. And even the actresses, like when you see them that age, it's just so, so much interesting, you know, so many things behind, you know, because they have a life, all that life behind you can just communicate. It's your, your look, your movements, everything is different, you know. So, and I think like a Hollywood, in, it's just open it at that, that door, which is great and give it so many more chances to like... um girls like women that are like 40 mm-hmm. 50 and just making more stories about women in general but but yes i feel like there's more opportunities i think there's a lot to achieve still but but i think there's just this coming and there's a lot of changes going on which is going to be great for like every actress and not feeling horrible that you're aging and they're not going to give you that role because they're just looking for even if the role in the script you read it is like wait a moment but it says 40 years old and yeah but we had to cast the 20 year old because you know the younger mm. you're like but that doesn't make sense you know I'm this age and I, that's what like, I want to look and that's the character that has to have that life and that experience how is that 20 year old going to tell all that story you know mm. so yeah I think it's 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 so much better now so yeah that's what I'm not giving up like I was like well if it comes it comes if not I'm happy where I am you know you have to relax about it and and just finding your own project mm. that you want to tell you know that's great I think I just trying to see if I found something amazing to tell a story of somebody and, and um, making, and your, making own your own project yeah Elsa just finally you travel a lot mm-hmm. and you travel w- with the whole brood I imagine you must because Byron Bay is so far away from everything <laughs> yes. it's not close to anywhere I no. mean you know it's even to Brisbane it's an hour yes yes um you must, do you have the whole travel thing just down pat? Do you just have like, okay, everyone, is it a military operation? How do you do it? Yeah, totally. You become like a surgeon. Like you have to time in how I just like adapt to the jet, like for the kids, where do you stop? Usually do the travel to Europe when they were babies and now I'm like, see if the next time I can go a direct flight, but going to Europe, I will stop in Dubai and I will have a day in Dubai so the kids can like just have a time. We'll go to a theme park of things that you can do in Dubai and like, and then the next step like to, it's such a long long way and my kids are very active so being like 30 hours in planes with them is just a nightmare so yeah and like and so I'll do the time in that I have to the plane not not can be at like four o'clock I need a night flight to just get in the morning <laughs> yeah. so like it was very organized in that way so how they sleep and I um and, and look I'm lucky and stuff like do you just does everyone have their little bags? And- yeah, they have like their pillows. And like when they were babies, I have everything, a list of all the things, a hundred <laughs> bags I was traveling with. And I had a big fight with one of the kids. I was embarrassed about this story, but we were like, I was traveling with baby food. And of course, it was the time the security was very strict with everything. And I'm in London and they're like, you know, like it was like, a long trip for 30 hours and that was my food for my kids for the 30 hours they yeah. just have baby food so the guy babies. yeah so he is like I was like going past security he's like now I have to I have like I don't know it was like two babies yeah. so it was like I don't know 15 of those baby foods and he's like yeah. we have to open you have to try them I was like <gasps> What are you talking about? If I open them, they're not gonna. They're be not fresh. gonna be fresh. They will like. They will get bad. I and can't if you have do to that. Taste fifteen baby foods. Exactly. Oh God. And it was like, no, you have to do it. And I'm like, 
Please, can I call Sakya? Like, what is your boss in here? Chris is like, because he's known, he was at start being known. He's like, he's going away. He's like, I don't want to talk. He's like, and I'm like, this is, you see my babies? They need to eat food. And this is really important. If I don't open this, I won't have food. Nobody has baby food in the plane. And the girl's like, the guy is getting red. And I'm making a face there. And I'm like, my kids are the most important thing in the world. And it's just like, at the end, I like, I, the boss came. I like, okay, she can just get you're three of them or four of them and you have to try four of them. And I was like, I'm okay for both. But so, no more than four. <laughs> Compromise. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that was like, since I had a big line and I'm like, and I'm like, that's the Latina, Latina yeah. casa that Chris hates in a way because I'm like, Whoa, <laughs> my babies. <laughs> So this is it, like a best story Chris tells. Like he's so embarrassed when I'm like, "What do you do? You think I'm gonna leave it?" He's like, "It's okay. It's not their fault, Elsa. It's not the security fault." I was like, "Yeah, it's not my fault. I have kids. I have to eat neither. So what am I gonna do?" <laughs> and no one on um, that plane would have been happy if those kids. Didn't oh no, have food. exactly. That's exactly. You see, my do you put a baby? You want me to day to die? Not eat it. <laughs> So I was like so dramatic. It's another good thing about having older kids. They can eat anything. <laughs> That's right. It's just like now you're traveling, you don't need like a full bag of snacks and things to give it to them. It's like, this is what it is. If you like it, you eat it. If not, that's it. So you Babies wait till we get there. man. Too yes, hard. They are. So you have three kids too, yeah? I do. But oh, the eldest is 22. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, and wow. And the, the, a 13-year-old daughter and an 11-year-old son. So oh, so teenagers. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, I'll be a grandmother soon, son. I think. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Fingers I crossed. That. <laughs> <laughs> He's just dying to have that. Hey, congratulations on the book. It's been an absolute delight to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure thank to you. be here with you. Elsa's book, Strong, is available now from all good booksellers. And if you're ever in Byron Bay, keep an eye out for the Hemsworth family of five because you may very well see them just going about their lives. I was talking to one business owner last time I was up there and they told me about something called the Hemsworth Effect – how Chris and Elsa moving to Byron has really helped the economy up there and turned a beachside town into an even more iconic holiday destination. This episode of No Filter was produced by Bridget Northeast. And if you haven't heard enough from me, you can sign up for my newsletter at miafriedman.com.au.